It is Friday, February 26, 2016, and this is a Matchbox, the original collectibles, official collector's carry case that holds 48 die-cast metal cars, made in 1983. Can you read the fine print? 1983. You can maybe read that. Inside this box, we have a big collection of 24, count them, 24, super fast Matchbox cars from the 70s, maybe? But before we get into that, we're going to introduce today's guest host, Indiana Jones. I can't remember the last time I saw an Indiana Jones movie. I don't know what he says. I don't know what he sounds like. So, uh... Maybe, uh, you know, he was in other movies, too. I walked into my house, and there was a one-armed man killing my wife. There you go. And, topside, the G.I. Joe guy. With his orange navy vest. Hi, Indy. Hi, topside. Why does Indy talk with a, a southern accent? So, let's get to work. Because this is work. This is my job. Yeah, right. What are we going to pull out of this case first? Let's start... It shouldn't be too hard. I'm not a sucker, so I don't need a bodyguard. Uh, let's go this side to this side. This is called a forklift. The Lansing Bagnall forklift. On the bottom, it says... Forklift truck, number five. I only have one, so this is number one. The forklift doesn't work too well. The steering wheel doesn't do nothing. The whole thing is dusty. That's as dusty as if it was in a cave where I got the... What was it, the, the Ankara stone something? What do, I, what do I know from Indiana Jones? Come on, give me a break. So there's the forklift. We have that. That's good. Here is this really cool bulldozer. If you have some bull that you want to doze, you can do it with this. I don't know if you can see that in there. Matchbox, made in England, Lesney. And this is called the Big Bull. Get it? Bull, bulldozer. And it has a Cobra engine. Is that supposed to be a Ford Cobra engine? Wow. 428? Right? 428 Cobra Jet? I don't know. Would that would that be enough to power a bulldozer? The track is uh, splitting in half. It's all dusty. I think you can get replacement tracks for these. That is such a sweet... And it has a hook on the back. You can put a trailer on there. Are there any trailers in here that I could put on? Well, there's a train. See? Here's a train car, and you can put that on the back, sort of, and then pull it. I, I've never been a huge fan of Matchbox, but the early ones that are all metal and that have this real cool aesthetic to them, I really do like. This reminds me of my childhood back in the late 70s, early 80s. Here is the Corvette. I don't know what they were thinking on those graphics. Transformers? Not Transformers. G.I. Joe! That's not Joe. We'll, we'll ask you your opinion when there's a boat topside. So, it is the Chevrolet Corvette. See? You can see. Uh, wow. That camera is good at focusing. I'm not good at refocusing, though. And let's see how super fast these wheels are. That's not super fast. That's super... Super something. See, Hot Wheels came out with their cars, which were super fast. Hot Wheels on bent axles with warped wheels will roll eight miles. So, Matchbox needed to do something. And it was super fast. Can't blame them. Now, what is this? The Lamborghini Countach. Countach? Uh... I didn't kill my wife. That's the only Harrison Ford movie that I even remember. I don't remember Indiana Jones. What's the Star Wars movie that he was in? Four, five, six, seven, right? 
Um, what did he say? Chewy, do something. It, uh, activate warp thrusters. So, Lamborghini Countach. You can open it up and see that V12 engine in the back there. That's a nice engine. Well, Countach graphics. These are very primitive graphics, but they're very sweet. I think this is a metal base. It's matte black. It looks like plastic, but it's metal. Dual quadruple exhaust. A little Countach logo. Can we focus in on that? Can we? Can we? Can we, director? Oh, there we go. Now here's something. See, Matchbox was notorious for this. They give you like a car, but then there'd be like some other stuff on the car. See? So this is called the Ford Transit. You can buy a Ford Transit right now. You can go 30,000 bucks, get a Ford Transit van right here in New York. Green glass, Ford logo on the front, really, really cool aesthetic. But it comes with this extra thing, and then what you can do is you can take your little forklift, and you can go, and then you can, you know, lift it up. That's called, see? That's called synergy, or cross-collateralization, in which the child owning the forklift would now want to own another car that had a forkliftable object on it. Or the child owning the car with the forkliftable object would say, Mommy, Mommy, how can I lift the forkliftable object without a forklift? And Mommy would say, Okay, I'm going to cough up another dollar for another car. So that year, Matchbox doubled their profits. Now this is called the D1496RF. This is such a cool little train. It's got an M on the front, I don't know what that stands for. It's called the shunter. Now what's a shunter? I think shunting is at the railroad yard when you get this little railroad locomotive that pushes the other boxcars around. It's not for long distance hauling, it's just for moving other cars around. So you hook this to this. See, there's your hook. And there's your hole that the hook goes into. And then you go choo 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 choo. Which brings us to the number 431, 432. Make up your mind, Matchbox. And now it's number 44 on the bottom. The number 44 passenger coach. Let's focus in on this so you can see it. Very good. G.I. Joe! Stupid. And uh, I guess people, folks, you know, if we were listening to public radio, they'd call it folks. What was it? What's the guy's name? This is Fresh Air on NPR. In the old days, folks would ride on railroad cars in England. Yeah, Terry Gross, you're, you're pretentious. All right, now here's the... Okay, this is 431432. This is 4345. Little locomotive. This is called the... Ot for Ot Steam Loco. Can we see that? Ot for Ot Steam Loco. And what you do is you put, um, I guess that's coal. You'd probably have a coal car back here that had more coal in it. And that fuels the Steam Loco and it chugs along. And it has a hook. So you put the hook on there. And there you go. And the shunter, like if the Steam Loco is broken or if, the steam, if you don't want to light the coal fire, then the shunter could just hook up to the Steam Loco and shunt it around. See? That's how things work in jolly old England where they make matchbox cars. Now, from jolly old England, we go to somewhat more stoic Germany for the Porsche. I'm gonna guess this is a Porsche 911. I'm gonna open the doors first. What, who has a trailer hitch on their Porsche? Nobody. Um, here's the doors open. Fly Porsche, fly. And let's see what it is. It is a Porsche Turbo. Is it a Turbo 911? Did I get it wrong? Did I get it right? It has textures on the bottom in case you want to flip it over and walk on it. The doors close. It is a super fast car with wheels that spin really, really well. Now, here you go, Mr. Navy Man. Oh, it's a rescue boat. G.I. Joe! I don't know what he says. I don't. I never. Who watch, I never watched this show. 
G.I. Joe. I'm too old for that show. Give me Bugs Bunny. So this is so, so sweet. It's like a like a hovercraft, you know? And you could put plenty of folks inside there. You know, Terry Gross and all her fan club could go in there. And it says rescue on the back, so you could rescue people. This is called the number 72 and 2 hovercraft. Made in England. Uh, now you can't see it. Now you can see it. Oh, uh, look. So, that is what you call a really cool Matchbox car. Whether or not these wheels are useless. What is this thing? Fire, fire car. All right. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit here. Number 84 or 64. I can't quite make it out. You can look at it. Fire Chief. All metal. Cool little decals on the side. I guess they hadn't mastered printing on the cars yet, so they're using paper decals. The wheels are kind of stupid. It's got this siren in the top. Uh, some conceptualizations of the rear grill and everything. Nice little car there. London, Lesney, England, 1953 to 1978. I guess this was made in 1978. I would have been eight years old. Yes, I was born in 1970. 1978, I would have been eight. In the pharmacy, looking at this double-decker bus. I like how this is made in a couple of pieces so they can put the seats so plenty of folks can ride on the top. And you have Matchbox super fast. What is this called? It is called the Londoner. Yes, because it's a bus that goes around London. Great graphics. Again, a decal instead of a, you know, printed right on. Classic double decker bus. Right, Indy? It's not as good as the Millennium Falcon, Chewy. Yeah. I know so much about Star Wars. Now, this thing, look how radical this thing is. It is called the, the Sambron Jacklift. Whatever that means, the wheels spin, big, smooth wheels, and this thing can lift stuff, and it has like a little doohickey here. So, we can go here, right, and we get your little truck, your uh, Ford Transit, that's got your uh, comestibles on it, and you go and you pick that up, and then you push the thing, and it goes flying. So that is a great toy. I like that way better than the forklift. Would I rather have a forklift or a jack lift? You take, you take a guess. I'm saying the jack lift. Now this, wow, that is one cool looking dump truck. It dumps. What is this called? This is called the super fast sight dumper. See. It, the, the Massachusetts accent is an affectation, but it's fun. Super fast. If you go to a Hot Wheels show or a, a diecast show in Massachusetts, do they call it super fast? Is this the super fast sight dumper? Look at this thing. It's got little ribs inside. You know, you can put stuff in there. You could even put this in there and then just uh, dump it out. Right? Greedo shot first. No, he didn't, jerk. But who cares? Now this, the Fawn dump truck. Fawn? Whatever happened to the Terex Titan? I would like a model Terex Titan. This is wild. It's wide. It's big. You could probably park a real car. This is probably not to scale. This is probably twice as big in real life as any of these other cars. It dumps... I mean, this is so big that Topside could sit comfortably in the back. Imagine a dump truck coming down the road with like a 47-foot man in the back of it. That would be spooky. That, oh, that's a nice truck right there. And to complement the Fawn dump truck, we have this little front-end loader. I used to have nightmares about front-end loaders. But what do we call that? The Matchbox... Tractor Shovel, 1978. This is a good year. This is probably a spoiled kid if you got all these toys in one year. Well, I guess it's 24. That's one every two weeks. So, like, every two weeks, a kid get a toy. Good for him. Cheap-ass parents. Now, this is another a variation, a bed variation. I didn't know Matchbox did variations. Good for you, Mary. Mary? Mary. This is the... See, this is called the Sight Dumper, but this is called the number 28 Sight Dumper. Here, the number 28's back here, huh? and here it's right here. So, 
One's yellow, one is uh, red, and you could use this to shovel things into it. And maybe this is more appropriate because it's red and yellow and red and yellow. Now, what about this thing? Is that? I think it is. Have you ever heard of a telescoping lightsaber? Yes, I have. But here's a telescoping crane. Not quite as good as a telescoping lightsaber, is it? No, it isn't. But we'll take what we can get. This is called the, uh, the crane truck, right? And it's a truck that has a crane on it, so that makes sense. Big fat wheels, uh, six wheels. They probably would be ten in real life. Little jack post, the crane goes up and spins around. Doesn't spin all the way around. Spins around, comes out, and it has this really cool boxy uh, front end that Hot Wheels uh, Matchbox did a lot. So I like that. That makes me a happy little camper. Now here is another train car that the shunter can shunt about. You know what I just realized? So, and then this, the Sealand, the ubiquitous Sealand container goes on the trailer, on the, the flatbed car. So, this is called the flat car. This is called the unmarked box that goes on the flat car. The doors do open. That was fun for an eight-year-old kid in the 70s. This box almost looks like in the Raiders of the Lost Ark when he finds the Lost Ark, but then they put it in that big warehouse and he's like, oh, all my hard work down the drain. Here, another Lamborghini Countach. We already covered that in an earlier, uh, an earlier moment of the program. This... Number 66, Mazda RX 500. I don't know what that is, but it's cool. You pop it open, it has an engine in there. Probably a rotary engine, right? Mazda did rotary engines. Gold glass, they did a lot of gold glass back then. How about this? The fire chicken. If I can get it out of the thing. This is called the number 16 Pontiac. Do you like Chevy or Pontiac? I like Chevy, but this decal is very crude. How many of these decals do you think they manufactured? Do you think there's a roll of these somewhere in a factory in England, like 10,000 of these stupid little decals, and you could just stick them on things? Do you think the, the children of the factory workers had these decals and were sticking them on stuff? Give me back my wife, even though she's dead. A one-armed man killed her. I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. Sorry. Okay, now we're getting to the end of this. Unless there's anything under here. Anything under here? Nope. The last car. And, you know, I'm not going to say this is the best car in the box, but come on. Like, have you ever watched one of those Clint Eastwood movies from San Francisco in the early 70s? And there's like a pimp character. This would be the perfect car. Lincoln Continental Mark V. Lincoln Continental Mark V, calling Lincoln Continental Mark V. It's a boat. G.I. Joe! See? It's like a big boat. It's a convertible. Look at that front end. It's like that Ford, Lincoln. You know, we're going to milk our aesthetic for all it's worth. The back, it says Continental on the spare tire cover built into the trunk. It's a Lincoln. This is a pimp mobile. This thing probably guzzled gas at an alarming rate, which sucked in 78. I think that's when they were doing some of that oil embargo stuff. This is a convertible top. It's it's plastic, but I think in real life it would be convertible. Tan interior, which would probably be vinyl because everything was vinyl back then and it was scorching hot when you got in it. Car's like a mile long. I just, I'm I'm dying at how cool this car is. I want to go find a 1978 Lincoln Continental Mark V and buy it and use it as my daily driver and paint it just like this car. This is sick. So, I would say that's a good place to end this particular box. Say goodbye, Indy. 
Goodbye, Indy. Uh, don't be a wise ass. Say goodbye. Topside G.I. Joe. That's all Topside says. And uh, say goodbye to the Lincoln Continental Mark V. That's going to go to its new owner today, and I will miss it. Thanks for tuning in. And I will have dozens more of these openings in the coming weeks. Thanks.